integration and areas under curves. So the definite integration can be used to find the area under a curve. So here we have a curve which is in the which is defined by y equals f of x. And we can define the area under the curve to the left of x as a function of x called a of x. And as x increases, this area ax also increases since x moves further to the right. So let's take a look at how, how integration actually gives us the area. Well, if we look at a small increase in x, say delta x, as shown here, so this is x and then we've got x plus delta x. So this gap here, this little gap here is delta x, a very small, a very slim strip that, that we have there. Then to find its area, delta a, i.e. the that area that we've got there, is found by finding, first of all, the area of a x plus dx, which is up to here, everything up to here. Take away the area ax, which is everything prior to that, this bit here. And if we do that, what we get is that area delta a. Now the increase in the delta a is approximately of a, a rectangular size because if we actually zoom in very, very, very close and make that strip as small as possible, then what we essentially end up with is we end up with delta x and this height would be the value y, i.e. the y value of the function, the output y. So the area delta a can then be represented by y times delta x, approximately equal to delta x. And that value would become exact as we, as delta a or delta x approaches zero. So we've got delta a is approximately equal to y delta x. And in the limit, as delta x approaches zero, as we've said here, then our area becomes y dx. Okay, so as delta a over delta, then we'll see that dA by dx becomes y, the limit. So the area becomes y dx in the limit as delta x approaches zero, giving us this here, which is the area of the curve. So the area between the positive curves, so there's our positive curve. The x-axis, there's our x-axis. And the lines x equals a, here's the line x equals a. And the line x equals b, here's the line x equals b. We can see that the area enclosed is this area, is given by the integral of y dx between the limits b and a, where y equals f of x is the equation of the curve. So when we do this integral, it is very important to remember that the area that we get is not just any area. It is the area between curve x-axis and the lines x equals a and x equals b. Very important to remember that. So let's take a look at applying this to this particular example here. So the sketch shows part of a curve with the equation y equals x bracket x squared minus four close bracket. We want to find out the area of the shaded region. So first of all, the area of the shaded region here we can see is got lower limit here of x equals minus two and an upper limit here of x equals to zero. So there are, they are our limits here. So we're going to integrate since we want to find the area between the curve. So integrate y dx and our limits, upper limit b and a, what are they going to be here? Well, let's go and write down what those things are. So our upper limit is x equals to zero. 
our lower limit is x equals to minus 2. What is our uh, equation y? Well, our equation y is here. So let's go and write that down. x, x squared minus 4 dx. Now, in order to do this integral, let's first of all multiply our bracket by the x outside to get x cubed minus 4x. So we haven't integrated yet. We're just getting it into a form that we can then go ahead and integrate. So now we're ready to integrate this. So add 1 to the power, x to the power of 4 divided by new power, minus 4x squared over 2. Inside our square brackets with the limits 0 and minus 2. 4 over 2, that simplifies to 2. So then we can go and substitute our upper limit into this square bracket. Substitute x with 0 to the power of 4 over 4 minus 2, 0 squared. All take away now the lower limit substituted in there minus 2 to the power of 4 over 4, minus 2, minus 2 squared. Tithing this up, we get 0, minus, we end up with 16 over 4, which is 4, and then 4 times minus 2, which is minus 8. So we end up with minus of negative 4, which is positive 4. So that area, the shaded area, we can say is area is equal to 4 units. Now we need to be careful because sometimes what we end up with is an area under the x-axis. And when the area bounded by a curve and the x-axis is below the x-axis, then integrating y dx gives us a negative answer. So let's take a look at what this may look like in a particular example here. So the first thing this question asks us to do is to sketch the curve with equation y equals x, x minus 1, x plus 3. So let's go and do that first. Here's our axes. And since the equation is in a factorized form, we can straight away determine what the roots are. The roots are at x equals to 0, x equals 1, and x equals to minus 3. So 0, 1, and minus 3. It's a cubic positive coefficient of x cubed, so it looks like that. This is minus 3, this is 0, this is 1. And we want to find the area of the finite region bounded by the curve and the x-axis. So the area bounded by the curve and the x-axis is this area, because it's bounded by the curve and the x-axis. And it's also this area here. Now, when we have this Sorry, particular... Have so when we have this particular case where we've got an area above the x-axis and an area below the x-axis, we actually need to treat each of them separately. So let's go and find out each part separately. So firstly, let's go and find this area here, area 1. We'll integrate, and we'll integrate our uh, y dx between the limits 0 and minus 3. Now, the equation y, which is x bracket x minus 1 x plus 3, I'm going to go and expand that and write it in the expanded form in here. So that's equal to x bracket got x squared. And then we've got plus 2x minus 3 dx, integral of that from 0 to minus 3, which I'll just tidy up a bit further from 0 to minus 3. 
and this gives us x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x dx. So this is what we're integrating, area 1. Now, once we integrate this, we're going to get x to the power of 4 over 4 plus 2x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared over 2 with the limits 0 minus 3. And if we go and substitute that in, when we substitute 0 in there, you'd end up with 0 because all of the terms have x in it. Minus, substitute the lower limit, we get minus 3 to the power of 4 over 4 plus 2 minus 3 to the power of 3 over 3 minus 3 minus 3 squared over 2. And this gives us negative of minus 123 over 4, which is equal to 123 over 4, then, since we have two negatives there. So that's area 1. Area 2, well, we can go st straight and use, instead of doing the whole integral again, we know that the integral is going to become that, but with different limits. So we're going to have x4 four over 4 plus 2x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared over 2. Now the upper limit is 1 and the lower limit is 0. When we substitute 1 in there, we end up with 1 to the power of 4 over 4 plus 2, 1 cubed over 3 minus 3, 1 squared over 2 minus, when we substitute 0 in there, it will get you 0 there. So that gives us So this gives us minus 7 over 12. So as we can see here, that this blue area, area 2 that we've got here, which is below the x-axis, appears as a negative value. And that's always going to be the case when we do an integral to find an area below the x-axis. So since the question asks us to find the area of the finite region bounded by the curve and the x-axis, we need to add the two areas, and areas cannot be negative. So we simply take the positive of both values. So 123 over 4 plus 7 over 12 would be our answer. So 123 over 4 plus 7 over 12 and that gets us 94 over 3 is our total area bounded by the curve and the x-axis.